What's up, guys? Jacob Owens here for the Buff Nerds, and we got Tom Tower here, DP extraordinaire. And uh, today we're going to tell you our top five tips, tricks for shooting a music video, the five things you absolutely must do to get the best music video possible. Number one. Number one is location. Location is everything. Honestly, like we've been at Tech Scouts where you know you show up the day before or the week before and you check out the location and it's super helpful when you can arrive and you can just see all of your shots come to life. You know, it's one thing when you pop in your earbuds, you listen to the song and you envision in your head and if you get to a location that's not what you imagine, right. it can make your video go from like, you know. Well, and you can take the same idea for a video and if you have this really cool location, the video is gonna look awesome. You shoot that same idea, the exact same idea, but in a location that's not like that location yeah. and it's very just, it's weak, it's plain, there's not a lot of depth to it, whatever. The videos are gonna be night and day just based off the location. The idea is gonna be the exact same, but the video is gonna be feel and look different just off location. So location is everything. You know, go out, search for the locations. There's a couple of places online that you can find good locations in LA locally, uh, like Peer Space and Gigster are a few. Sometimes you can get places off Airbnb if you message the host. So those are like three little online sites. I'll link them in the description below that you can reach out and find some cool locations and spaces. Tip number two. Cool, tip number two is camera stability and movement. Uh, there's a huge difference when you're going through your shot list between a shot that is handheld, a shot that is on sticks, a shot that is on a gimbal or a steady cam or a crane, and honestly, like knowing when to use certain movement. I mean, not every video is handheld, not every video is sticks. So listen to the song, and I think that usually dictates sort of like how you want to do camera movement. If you're doing like an R&B video, it doesn't make right. sense to like do a shaky handheld video. Right. If you're doing like That's, a hip hop video, then handheld might make a lot more sense. Absolutely, like so, I always tell people, camera movement, move the camera to the beat and rhythm of the song. If the song has a lot of energy, and like bounce to it, give it some bounce, give it some movement. But if it's a calm and smooth song, don't sit there and rock the camera and move it around. So think critically about what the song sounds like and the mood and tone of the song and use that camera movement to enhance it and not, you know, bring it down and completely, you know, be on opposite spectrums there. So camera movement and the stability of your camera are super important for achieving like a good music quality music video look. Tip number three is frame rate and shutter angle. So when you're shooting um, like something that has a lot of high energy, if you boost up your shutter speed, um, it'll kind of give, a, what's the movie? Uh, Saving Private Ryan. It's a very raw, just like visceral look to it and that's because they cranked up the shutter. Um, so if, you're, if the song has a lot of energy, crank up that shutter, get a little more raw look. If it's a, something a little more you know, cinematic and smooth, take that shutter down to 48. If your camera can do 48, if it can't, like a DSLR, then sit it around like 50. And a good like, rule of thumb, and we talk about this in a book that we wrote uh, that we linked in the description below, but whatever your frame rate is, just times that by two and that's your shutter. So if you're shooting at 24 frames a second, your shutter angle will be one over 48. Right. And that's called 180 degrees. But if you want to like sharpen it, like he was saying, uh, if you shoot at 24 frames, you would shoot at like a 1 over 120 or a 1 over 144, and that makes it higher and therefore sharper. Right, and again, touching on what Tom said, um, whatever your um, frame rate is, you want to double that. So if you're shooting 60 frames a second slow motion, trying to get good slow motion, you're going to double that and you're going to put your shutter at 120. That's how you're going to get the smoothest slow motion. So that's also something to really consider. And I think a lot of beginners don't realize and don't do, and then they get amateurish looking videos. And just rule of thumb, if you do crank up your shutter, you actually do lose light. So if you're doing something that's very low light scene, that might be a little tricky. Maybe you have to adjust by opening up the aperture or boosting the ISO. So quick rule of thumb, if you're going to change your shutter angle past 180, you will lose a couple light or stops of light. But yeah. Yep. Tip number four. Tip number four is angles or coverage. Uh, going into a music video, it makes no sense just to shoot one wide shot and call it good. You know, you don't want to get in the edit and the artist's like, all right, cool man, well, like, where's the close up? And you're like, oh, well, I only did one wide of you, you know, doing your performance shot. Like, always go into it and plan and shoot to edit, you know, go in for right. a wide, get a medium, get a close. I mean, even overshoot if you can because you right. want to get in the edit and have options. You know? Right. Yeah, and the, the biggest thing is to have, have options when you're editing. Like, you don't want to have one scene where you have one angle 
and nothing else to cut to. So again, the, the, the more variety of angles that you can shoot an artist from, that you can cut to, it's gonna make your video more interesting and less boring because the audience is always kind of seeing something new. You People today have such short attention spans, so you wanna constantly be introducing new angles, new shots to keep the audience glued to the screen. Something we try and do per performance take on say like a hip hop video is go into it with two uh, 24 frames a second take and then a slow mo take. Yeah. And then when you do a slow mo take, play the record in the background, just tell them to vibe out and don't actually have them sing it. And that's just a great little thing so you can intercut into the performance shots, like a slow mo shot of him kind of bobbing. Get some B roll. Exactly. So plan and you know just get the coverage slow mo and 24 frames a second. Last but not least, tip number five. We think this one's pretty important and often overlooked. Uh, we think color correction or color grading is our five or what we think is like the top five most important. Color correction is super important because a, a video can, I think, live or die by color. If it has a yeah. terrible shitty, sorry, <laughs> terrible <laughs> color correction, then you can take beautiful footage and just make it look like crap. And that's it, you work hard to shoot it a certain way, light it a certain way, and then if you color it poorly, it just looks bad and amateurish and not visually pleasing to the eye and it can just ruin your whole thing. So color correction is super important. It's cool, we actually linked up uh, recently with a uh, new startup company that does, sells like filmmaking assets. Their name is Tropic Color, I'm sure you've seen both of us talk about it on social yeah. media. And really there's no excuse, their stuff is really, really affordable. Uh, we've used it on our last few projects. They have like vintage LUTs, they have teal and orange LUTs. I'm a big fan of that one. And honestly, if you have Premiere Pro, Final Cut X, you know, Resolve, it all works great with like, you right. know, Log C or neutral profiles and it's, it's awesome. Yeah, for a lot of people that have trouble color, uh, with color correction, LUTs are kind of a, um, you know, an easy thing. You can just apply a LUT and tweak it a little bit if necessary, but a lot of people struggle with color correction, and so LUTs are a, kind of a, a good thing for beginners or amateurs, you know, who are trying to learn the editing and coloring process and might not be the best at it, so we highly recommend Tropic Color. Not only are they really good, but they're also very affordable for like independent filmmakers, videographers, and stuff like that. All right, guys, so that was our five tips for shooting and creating the best music video you possibly can. Um, hopefully these tips were helpful to you guys and you guys learned something. Yeah, honestly, I mean, if this is just sort of like grazing across our right. top five, but we really do go in depth in right. the book that we wrote. Also, if you really enjoyed this video, we plan on doing, and let us know in the comments below if this is something you guys would want, but we were gonna do a whole <laughs> video just on like, just the lighting and just like sort of more the camera stuff, but this was just an overall touching on like the five most important things that we use when we shoot music. Yeah, videos. we wanna do a lot more videos like breaking down, you know, lighting or lighting tricks, or, you know, or behind the scenes breakdowns and different things. So if there's certain things you wanna see, comment below so we know like, hey, people wanna see this and so we can do that and, um, you know, check that out and give you guys that content. And again, like Tom said, we talk about, we have a 127 page guide manual from everything from shooting and camera settings to like how to find clients and write contracts and invoices and you know, getting money on YouTube and Amazon and just everything that you would need to know as a filmmaker. So um, again, Check in the link in the description. Appreciate y'all for watching. Like and subscribe and I'm out. Are you out, Tom? Outro. All right, <laughs> peace guys. <laughs>